Well, hello, I'm Dr. Julia Royston, and welcome to another edition of Live Your Best Life, where we bring you people, places, and things, information, resources, and tools to help you live your best life. And hopefully, we will not only inform, but uh, help to inspire you on your journey. So whether you know someone or uh, after you hear this interview or whether it is you yourself, know that you're not in it alone and uh, we're here, here to help you uh, be on your journey to living your best life because life is a journey. It, yes. I wish it were a one uh, um, a one time deal and we just had to fix it one time, but no, it's a daily journey. So um, I want you to get your pen and paper out so you can um, follow my guest and uh, be inspired by her and follow her website as well as uh, purchase her book. So um, I want to introduce you to uh, Ms. Marlene DeRoso. I want yes. to um, introduce herself formally, tell us what she does, where she lives, um, and then how you can follow her on social media. Because the people on live, who listen to Live Your Best Life are international and around the world. And so therefore, um, we are in the internet space big time. Marlene, yes. welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Royston. Um, I normally call you Julia, but oh, uh, yeah, we'll be yeah, a little yeah. bit more formal All today. All day long. No, no, no. Yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for having me and thank you for all your help. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Marlene DeRoso. I reside in sunny uh, Florida. I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, uh, and uh, I still live in South Florida. I am a professional financial executive uh, by trade. Um, I do hold a CPA license and I'm also the CFO for a healthcare organization. Um, I've had uh, over 20 years um, professional financial experience, uh, but in the meantime, I'm also um, venturing on to uh, pursuing a doctorate degree myself. So I'm currently enrolled in a doctoral program and um, hoping to get the doctorate in organizational leadership. Uh, just because I feel management and leadership are very, very important to the success of any business or any relationship, uh, for that matter, uh, that we want to foster and build. So um, I'm happy to be here today, and um, I can be reached on Facebook, uh, Marlene Sapodi DeRoso, and on Instagram, uh, at It'll Happen Book, that's at I-T-L-L-H-A-P-P-E-N-B-O-O-K, and um, I have a website, www.happenbook.com. And also through Ms. Julia, if you need to get in touch with oh, me, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, reach out to me. Julia Royston, I'm everywhere you want to be. So, yes. so I got to go back first. Yes. Um, how does uh, a young woman um, get here? I mean, the balance of it all the coordination of it all. Yeah. Um, so take us kind of on the backstory, not related to the book. I mean, just life period, because right. first off, congratulations on all you've achieved thus far. Thank you. All you have to go, um, you know, when we combine wife, mother, and just stop right there. Those <laughs> things alone, okay. Yes. So then we add CPA, CFO, uh, doctoral program. So that means we have a bachelor's and master's, at least Correct. one, headed yes. into the doctoral program. I mean, how do you do it all? You know, uh, thank you so much for those card kind words and, and the acknowledgement, uh, uh, Dr. Royston, because I feel like, um, you know, sometimes it feels surreal because I was raised by immigrant parents. My parents migrated uh, from Haiti back in, I want to say 1978 or 1979, just a couple years uh, before I was born. And from the time I was a little girl, what's been instilled in me is you have to have an education, even if it's not necessarily a formal education, but you have to learn something. You have to learn something. You have to be able to give back and provide for yourself and for your community. And my parents have always, always stressed that. And, you know, because my parents are Haitian as well, I don't know if it's necessarily an island thing. I never really felt that you know, um, oh, okay, well, I've accomplished this, so now I'm done. No, they're like, okay, you did that. Okay, great. You What's were supposed next? to do that. What's next? You know, you know, so you can't, we never were really allowed to live in a space where um, my siblings and I would be or feel complacent. 
because it was always what's the next thing. So I think now that I'm a little older and I talk to my mom and dad about it, they say, ah, I'm not really sure that was kind of the best approach, you know, because now they see how much pressure uh, life just has in general, because you're not only dealing with, you know, work and family, but it's just pressure alone to succeed and to sustain. And some of the things are out of your control if you're unable to do so, but they instilled that in me. So I have to say that um, how my parents raised me is what uh, propelled me actually to be where I am today. Uh, so keeping that in mind, I was normally always a straight A student. Um, you know, school just kind of came naturally to me. I was always looking for the next, you know, club to join. How do I help the principal? How do I help the teacher? You know, just doing extra things. And from there, obviously, I got my, my high school diploma. I, I was in a magnet program uh, from elementary school all the way through high school. And I think that helps too, because when you're in a magnet program or a school that specializes in something uh, in addition to just regular education, it kind of helps prepare you for the future where you'll be juggling, where you don't have to do this, but if you choose to do it, it'll be beneficial for you, but it's not going to be easy. You have to work at it. You know, that's extra time, extra studying, extra everything. So I think that that also helped me um, from a young age, be able to plan and organize to make sure I get everything done. Um, so from there, I went to college, got my bachelor's degree, you know, and then the job that I currently have, I've been there 19 years. And quite honestly, it's the job that I started uh, my senior year of college, because my degree was in business, I felt it was very general. Um, so I said, okay, well, what do I do? What kind of business? Where do I go? So I was lucky enough to um, land the position with my company. I started off as the payroll uh, coordinator and uh, also a full-time student. I was a senior in college and I just worked my way up from there. And thank goodness, um, my managers and the owner of the company, they saw something in me uh, that uh, wanted them to continue to invest in me, which is why I also um, have grown as a manager, as a professional person and want to get my doctorate in organizational leadership because I see how important it is and how it was for me to grow by having someone properly invest in you and teaching you the right things and mm -hmm. having you exposed to the good, the bad, and the ugly as it relates to the business world, you know? Right, right. Um, so that's a little bit about, you know, how, and again, while I was at work, I just kept getting promoted, uh, ready for the next challenge. And then eventually I became uh, the CFO uh, of the company. And um, yeah, that's, that's where we are, you know, right now I manage yeah. a, a team of 26 uh, accounting and, and HR and payroll professionals. And um, it's really a challenge because the industry that I'm in right now with COVID, uh, we're in the nursing home business. So it's mm. taken a big hit, but um, we're in it together. We're in it together. And I do say that I have a tightly knit group because I wouldn't be able to do it without them. You know, everything is a team approach. You right, know? So, right. Well, definitely. I mean, we all have to have a team approach right now i mean yes. it's, it's just that season and that time so yes. I, I find myself uh kind of the same way because my parents you know when we were little you know we knew we were going to college we didn't even right. know what college the word college started with whether right. it was a or a k and i've said that often if you've listened to me you know i've said that often because you know how you are brought up does have a great influence on your life and let me pause and say this um, please support the uh, aid, Haiti uh, efforts in any way, shape, or form, any way possible. Um, we Our hearts go out, but our money needs to go out too. Absolutely. And our support in any way. Now, be sure that you um, contact the organization. You know what organization you're contributing to because right. you know there are, there are artists out there uh, always looking to take advantage of a horrible situation, situation right. but an organization that you trust and that you know, and that will get, as they say, the money on the ground, the resources on the ground, and will be actual boots on the ground where you need Absolutely. to go and where you want it to go. Please support the Haiti efforts as much as you can and as yes. uh, possible and as soon as you can, because Absolutely. the lives are literally at stake. And um, um, we're, uh, our hearts and prayers and, and finances go out to uh, every and uh, the efforts there in Haiti. So having that, um, those roots, having that encouragement, because your village is tight. Your yes. village is, is, is got it on lock. So that, <laughs> that makes a difference too, as well, because, yes. you know, I, I tell people, Julia, how do you do? I was like, listen, baby, 
you don't understand the way our house was run. Right. Our house was run on work. We worked hard. We played yes. hard too. But right. We, I mean, everything worked in our house. I mean, exactly. we were all on the same grind. Entrepreneurship is in my blood. School, education, I'm the same thing. Just like Marlene, yes. raised the same way. Education, yep. my dad was an educator. My mom was a Sunday school teacher. My dad was the director of Christian education in our local church, regional level, national level, and travel yep. abroad. So Absolutely. Ed. So therefore, uh, my encouragement to parents even before we move to the next set segment is be sure to instill that because yes. those kids who get it, oh, they get it. And yes. they take it on to the next level. And I am my father's legacy. Marlene is her yes. family's legacy. And she's pouring that in to the next generation. We're going to take it right here and we'll be right back. And we're back. I'm Dr. Julia Royston. This is Live Your Best Life with my special guest, Ms. Marlene DeRoso. And again, I remind you, just in case you weren't on or earlier and you're just now joining me, uh, um, uh, Ms. DeRoso is of uh, Haitian parents and immigration immigrant parents. And yes. we definitely want to reach out and support them. So if you heard it before, I'm just reiterating it again because yes. um, um, we're all a village. This globe, uh, the world is a village. And if you can support, please do so and reach out and help them. Okay, Absolutely. So we find the man of our dreams. Yay! <laughs> yes, Sister Marion, yay! And then it's time to have babies. And then what happened? Well, it's funny because it's time to have babies. But in the meantime, I'm always busy anyway. So I'm in school, I'm working, you know, we're newlyweds. So it's like, uh, you know, just kind of test the waters a little bit. Let's kind of see what happens, but not really officially trying to make it happen because we were quote unquote still young. But in the back of my brain, I just felt a little, I had that little voice on the inside that said, you know, you have to go and get checked out because after about a year or two almost of trying or not trying officially and nothing happening, that little voice just kept nudging and said, you have to go get checked out. And the main reason was because my husband um, had a son or has a son, his name is Richard, and um, he's been in my life since he was two, so he's technically mine. I always joke and say that he's the only baby that didn't cause me any labor pain. <laughs> <laughs> and we I love, love him so much. I, I love him wonderful. so much like he's, yes, I love Yay. him so much like he's my own, you know, yes, and yes, uh, yes, as a matter yes, of fact, he just walked in and I brought know. me some coffee. He just <laughs> went on the coffee run. <laughs> Oh, we love Richard. He's Richard, a wonderful listen, child. Richard wonderful is everything. Young, oh, excuse me, not a child. He's yes. a wonderful young man. Young man, yes. He's everything. So because my husband already had Richard, I said, okay, well, so, something's not right. So maybe the problem is me because honestly and quite frankly, he has a child. So what's going on? So we ended up um, going to the doctor because actually my husband's um, godfather was having fertility issues too with his wife and he recommended a doctor that they went to and the wife was able to get pregnant. So we pursued that and, and went to that doctor's office. And when we got there, I'll never forget, Miss Julia, all of the nurses, you know, the medical assistants, you know, everyone in there, they were like, what are you guys doing here? And we're like, well, wait, what happened? You guys are so young. You Please, you have time. Just, just go. You know, you don't need to come get checked out. There's nothing wrong with you. You have time. I said, listen, my, uh, something is telling me to come here, okay? And I need to get checked out. I'd rather know because just as easily as you're telling us we're young and we have time, what, uh, what happens is I wait, I wait, I wait, thinking I have time. And then when I come back at a, you know, advanced maternal age, sure. the first thing that the medical practice is normally- Why did you come earlier? Is, Why didn't you come earlier? Why did you wait so long? And, you know, I'll never forget, she was a nice uh, nurse from Jamaica. And, you know, she had that island accent. She goes, no, man, no, man, what? no, no, you guys are babies. You don't need to be here. It was so hilarious. So when I told her that, she said, you know what? You're right. Better to rule out any issues now so that you know and you are well equipped to move forward. So um, so with that particular uh, clinic, we were with them. Uh, we had all kinds of diagnostic testing. We had three 
uh, medicated uh, cycles. They're called uh, intrauterine inseminations, IUI, but um, we weren't successful. But what we found out at that point is that um, I had something called PCOS, which is pretty much like a in horn, uh, like an imbalance of the hormones. That's one part of PCOS, but um, so that kind of, you know, was a little bit, you know, iffy. And then we also found out that there may have been a slight issue with uh, my husband's count, but nothing worrisome. Just, you know, it wasn't anything that couldn't be fixed pretty much. So after uh, that clinic, um, we ended up taking a break because it really took a toll on my body. I gained a lot of weight from the medication that they give you for the cycles. You know, you get tired, you know, it, it was just very, very tough. And, you know, trying to build my career and work and constantly having to leave for an appointment and, you know, back and forth, it was just really stressful, you know? So um, I took a little bit of time off and then uh, pursued my master's degree. And also we bought a house. So that kept us occupied. So we were working on the house. I did a year and a half of my master's program. And then after that, it was like, okay, I think we should kind of try again. So a few years had gone by, but in the meantime, nothing happened. We never got pregnant on our own. And a few years went by and we decided to reach out and uh, see a different doctor. So we went to the other doctor office and um, we had pretty much the same kind of cycle that we had at the previous clinic, but the protocol was a little bit more advanced with respect to the type of treatment and medication that they gave for those cycles. So um, unfortunately that didn't work either. And then I was able to link up with um, another uh, group of young women. She created a young lady I know created a group called You Are Not Alone. And in part of our meetings and discussion, uh, my doctor, his name came up, uh, Dr. Hoffman. And at that point I said, you know, let me try his clinic out. And Ms. Julia, from the time I, my husband and I linked up with Dr. Hoffman, it was just fantastic. And wow. he said, he said, listen, we're gonna be able to help you. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna cut to the, I'm not gonna, you know, beat around the bush. I'm gonna cut to the chase. This is the protocol. This is what we're gonna do. You know, I'm here for you with anything you need. Ask me whatever questions. It was just a very amicable and comfortable and, you know, open relationship from the beginning. And well, uh, well, one thing about it that we've learned even from this process. So anybody who's listening, anybody who knows of someone who's having issues, keep going until you yes. find the doctor for you exactly. and keep going until you get solutions. And I'm telling you that is for not just infertility, but right. that's for anything. The healthcare Absolutely. industry is as vast and diverse as, as anything right now. And give them a little grace that you know patience and all of that if you don't find what you need keep going and keep moving because um you need to find the the person and the doctor um definitely for you and that's going to actually meet your needs now i don't want to give away the um uh no spoiler alerts right here because you gotta buy the book you gotta purchase the book so yeah i want to switch gears just a little bit so you kind of get the you know you got your palette wet you got your feet wet and all that good stuff so you know this is a journey this is an ongoing journey absolutely uh, I think one of the most important things um for her journey uh for because we've worked together for a while uh, on this book is that we really wanted to tell the journey step by step in a format but also wanted to let people know what happened to you right also to encourage people there is encouragement all through the book. There is help all through the book. There is scriptural affirmations all through the book to really help that couple, that woman, that man to really understand that this is a journey and right. your situation may be different. So you right. can't run to your doctor and say, it happened for Marley. What's wrong with me? You know, right, I, right. We all know that. So, so I want to switch gears here yes. a little bit and really talk about the book writing journey okay. as well, because I know some people are out there who say, I have a story as well to tell. Yes. And uh, when you're telling those personal uh, life stories, that that's a little bit different than yeah. just 10 steps to happiness or 12 steps to, uh, to learn better. Uh, you know, one of those things. So um, so explain a little bit about, we know the backstory and the why, Right. But when did you actually start writing that whole writing process for you? Okay. Thank you for that. That's a, that's a fantastic question because again, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I didn't, I didn't deliberately set out to write the book. 
It was not, okay, part of my goals is I'm going to write this book on infertility. One, I didn't even know I would have this experience, right? And two, I wasn't even sure how I would get through it. So writing a book um, definitely was not part of the, of the plan. But as I went through the journey, um, as you so aptly explained, you know, I needed a way to cope and I needed an outlet. And I found that I just love to write regardless. I'm, I, you know, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm a great writer. Yeah. I love to yeah. express myself. You know, I, 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 try, <laughs> I, I it just comes naturally for yeah. me because even at work, you know, my, my managers will say, okay, well, it's going to take me two hours to write an email. You wrote it in five minutes like that. It was just easy. So I've also felt therapeutic where if I'm going through something, even as a little girl, I kept diaries or, you know, just love to write. So as I was going and experiencing the, 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 um, the uh, different segments on my journey, I would have, you know, tough times, a tough week, a tough day, and I would write it down. And I would, you know, document the day. On this day, this happened. This is how I felt. And then it's like, oh, okay, great. I feel better, you know? And then that's kind of sort of how the book started. And then once I got to the end of, of our journey, um, which is where we are today, I said, you know, I really feel like this can help someone. I said, because I probably had, Ms. Julia, maybe what, over 30,000 words just oh, in yeah. a journal yeah, yeah. No, itself, no, just yeah. raw entries, yeah. just regular writing. And I said, I feel like I have to do something with this. So the plan was um, a couple years ago, I said, oh, well, you let me try to reach out to uh, people that I know who know publishers or people that help people put books together. And even though I was thinking this, I was still feeling in the other side of my brain when no one cares, who am I? This doesn't matter. This is stupid. So I went back and forth in my head on whether I should pursue, uh, you know, creating it into an actual published work or if I should just leave it alone. But that little voice inside keep kept at me and, 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 and kept telling me, no, this will help people. You need to be able to do it. So long story short, I was able to hook up with Miss Julia. This was 2018. It, it was 2018, hooked up with Miss Julia. We had our first consultation and when she saw everything that I wrote, she said, oh my God, girl, this book is written. I'm like, what? She goes, this book is done. Like, you don't understand. Like, this book is done. And I, I still couldn't put two and two together, but I love the encouragement that that gave me because it was another sign that, okay, you know what? I need to go ahead and pursue this, especially because it seems that I've already done all of the oh, yeah, work, you, you, you know? Yeah, so, you um, yes. So that's what we did. And then um, a couple years went by uh, and I'll never forget because, COVID came around and COVID was 2020. And I said, you know, I just feel unaccomplished as it relates to this project that I started and haven't finished. Cause I'm one of those people, if I start, I want to finish. And it just kept nagging me. Like, I got to get this book. I got, you know, but what is Ms. Julia going to say? It's been two years. What am I going to do? I said, you know what? No, we need to get out of COVID showing that we've done something productive I've given back to the community. I'm paying it forward. And, and, and in, in all of this, which is, I feel is really important to the book writing aspect, at least for me, was the sense of advocacy because I want to venture off into that part, you know, in my next phase of life, advocating, helping people. And I said, you know what? COVID is the time. We don't have anything else to do. Other people are dying left and right. We're alive. How can I help? So at that point, I'll never forget, I, I went and I searched my email. I found the last thread that, you know, Ms. Julia and I uh, partook in and I just hit reply. And I'm like, Ms. Julia, I don't know if you remember me, but this was two years ago. And she's like, yep, it's dated 2018. But you know, Ms. Ju Ms. Julia's thing was let's go. Like, yeah. Those two words, let's go with an exclamation point. And then it's like, you know what? She's speaking my language. We're on the same wavelength. She didn't criticize me or tell me, well, you waited this long and what were you doing? No, it was fantastic. We literally picked up right where we left off. And the good thing is that like Ms. Julia had explained to me, the majority of the book was done because like she said in the earlier segment, it comprises of, you know, daily journal entries and things which kind of takes you back to um, the actual happenings of things versus just having a recollection of what happened in a general standpoint. So the next part was working with Ms. Julia, putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So we had the guts and we had to try to fill in the different gaps of either the beginning, tie it into the, the, the middle, what happened in the middle between this gap and tie it in. So it was a lot of work and our goal was to try to get it done at the end of 2020, um, but life had other plans as usual, so we weren't able to, but we did meet our, our next deadline, which was uh, the spring of this year. 
Uh, and it was also my birthday. I said, okay, we can push to get that done. And we did. And so it was yeah. a lot of work, a lot of writing, a lot of meetings, because you have to relive it, go through it and write everything again so that you can put the puzzles together and complete the story of the journey. Exactly. So. And we've got you know, it's, it's, it's not a little book. It's, it's, it's uh, um, clearly an ongoing journey, but it was really a pleasure. Now, if, if I have a client that's willing to put in the work, so we met at 7.30 in the morning on Saturdays, 9 a.m., 8 a.m. on Saturdays was the best morning for her before her babies got up. I'm good. I'm right. I'm, when you put in the work, I'm good. I have, Absolutely. I had the, uh, the papers and, and the documents by Thursday or Friday, I was able yep. to review and say, all right, Saturday, here we go. Is our writing time. This is what we missing. This is what we got to have. This is right. what maybe you think about and all of that. So the writing process, uh, was ongoing because this is, this is a huge body of work. Now, right. um, the next phase, of course, the way the book looks, and the way the book is laid out, all the pictures that are included, it is a gorgeous uh, book itself. I, I really love it. It's one of my um, favorites. <laughs> of course, all of them are, but yeah. hers is really one of my favorites. I love it, the cover and, and everything about it and the interior as well. So look yes. up, it'll happen by 30. Yes, It's by uh, Marlene C. And there's going to be a C, her middle initial, Duro, yes. so that's D U R. E A U. D O S E A U. I forgot it. Yes, yes. D U R O S E A U. Yes. E A U. Why did I miss the O and S? Oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's perfect. Be sure and look that up. Okay, so give them your website again so they can find it, purchase it, and all that good stuff. Yes, the website is www.happen, H A P P E N, book, B O O K dot com. And you can purchase the book there and you can reach out to me also via email at info, I-N-F-O at happenbook.com. And there's also an Instagram page at it'll happen book. That's I-T-L-L-H-A-P-P-E-N-B-O-O-K. So yes. Oh, I'm, I'm super proud and super happy. Now, if just in case, you know, you are suffering infertility issues, this is the book for you. Absolutely. This will walk you through and yes, get your tissue out and you uh, will um, at times cry and right. at other times you will laugh, but you will go through all of those emotions that you had. And number one, to know that someone else in Southern Florida has gone through the exact same thing that you've gone through. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and, and I look forward to also um, her advocacy for other people and yes. what that looks like. Let her get through her doctor first and then she's coming for y'all. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And I've already started working on it, but I'm trying not to take on too much, as you know, because right. I'm not with the program and the kids. The doctor first. Yes. So follow her closely on social absolutely. media. Absolutely. Purchase her book and see when you're following her on social media, you'll know when she gets ready to launch. Because, you know, if she's hooked yes. up with Miss Julia, Miss Julia Royston is going to make sure she goes to that next level. And what does that look like? Well, we got to get through this doctoral program first. Yes. We got to get through one thing at a time. We can't be overloaded with too many things because we right. still have to make sure that we remain a uh, a fun wife and mother. How about that? Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's yes, been a yes, pleasure yes. having you on. I Thank you. What's going to happen in the future? Absolutely. All that good stuff. And uh, to the future, Dr. Our Marlene DeRoso and CFO and mother and wife and oh gosh, a great- All of the above. Uh, All the above. And I hope to hopefully come to Southern Florida sometime. Yes, that'll uh, be great. A big old hug. uh, Yes, absolutely. We've been on a journey since 2018, but we are here and we're ready to move it to the next level. So thank you again for being my guest. Thank you. Dr. Julia Royston of Live Your Best Life, praying today, tomorrow, and always that you live your best life. Be blessed. Have a great day. Thank you.